Hello there, I'm Leo Wardup for Kick Guru, and this case here is the Fractal Design Define S uh, with window, uh, and hence the box. Now, if you cast your mind back but a few months, you may recall the Fractal Design Define R5, which is a fair old tongue twister. And this case looks, at first flush, very similar. So the Define S, Define R5, the one is a variant on the other. This is true. However, in many respects, this Define S is, and bear in mind, this is only, we're not even halfway through the year. I predict that this case is going to be the most exciting, interesting, and enthusiast friendly case we're going to see in 2015. A big claim, and I might be completely incorrect, but let's rattle through it. So, if we take a quick tour of the outside of the case, we've got a front panel that's solid, no optical drives. And down the sides, we have vents for airflow. We've got the window on this side, solid panel here. Around the back, we've got seven expansion slots, pass about the bottom. It's all very conventional. I'll just pull off the uh, side panels. So the window panel, two captive thumb screws away it comes. Um, the window, uh, it looks good. However, I would say it is not the finest quality. If I scratch that with my finger or uh, with um, a tool, I am quite certain I'm going to gouge it. The plastic feels slightly soft. If I take off the other panel, two captive thumb screws again, uh, it's quite heavy. There's this panel of bitumen sound deadening material. The panels are interchangeable. Uh, it is interesting, possibly, to note that uh, the Define S and the Define R5, the two side panels from the two models, are not interchangeable. Um, Fractal Design have um, monkeyed around slightly with the mounting mechanism. Also, the Moduvent panels that go on the top, uh, there's... which one is it? It's that panel there which is symmetrical, more or less symmetrical, that goes at the back. And then these two which have these sorts of scallops uh, clip in front. And the idea is you open up uh, vented uh, sections of the top of the case. Uh, I've removed them because I've mounted a radiator in the top. So that's why they're not there, but when the case arrives, it's got that smooth, unbroken look about it, which is absolutely fine and dandy. Um, but if you want ventilation in the top of the case, you're removing the panels. At the front of the case, uh, turn it like so, so you can see, we've got a 140mm fan, fractal design obviously, and at the rear we have the same model of fan. Let me just um, pull off the front panel, which is uh, mounted on pop pins comes away with a bit of a tug. There we go. So it's just a plain case with, as I say, vents in the sides to allow air to flow in and through. And then at the front, we've got this full height, uh, magnetically attached air filter, which just clips in like so, magnets there, and it latches in this side. So it stays in place quite securely. And there you can see it. One fan, one fan. The hardware I've installed is uh, my regular ASRock Z97 killer motherboard, a Core i7 processor, some uh, Corsair LP RAM. At the bottom, we've got Seasonic Platinum uh, fanless power supply, 520 watt. So it's passively cooled and silent. And I'll come to the drives in just a second because I imagine right now you're looking at this going, oh look, he's removed the drive towers. And I haven't. I've removed absolutely nothing from this case apart from those mod event panels. This is how it comes. It is a whopping great big, almost empty box. Pass by the bottom, no separation whatsoever. It is just a huge open case. Uh, I've even left, as you can see, the front and the rear fans. In the roof of the case, and this is where things get uh, quite interesting, I feel, it's this Kelvin S36 uh, liquid cooler from Fractal Design. Um, and if you're really on the ball, you'll be aware, actually, I've missed the launch date of this case by a little while because I wanted to get this cooler in from Fractal Design. And why did I want to do that? Because this case supports up to a 420mm radiator in the roof and up to a 360mm radiator in the front. So 3 by 120 and 3 by 140 in the roof. Um, but obviously, if you want to start putting a liquid cooler in the front, you're going to have to take out the standard front fan, which is no big deal. It's four screws and it comes away. Um, in this instance, I took the slightly lazier approach of simply adding the liquid cooler in the roof. And that whacking great big 360 uh, radiator, it just vanishes in and those three 120mm fans. And there is space to spare. And I could put the same again in the front on the graphics card. 
Um, I am genuinely excited by that. Uh, which might sound a bit nerdy, but there we have it. Now the liquid cooler is the first fractal design liquid cooler I've actually seen. And it's particularly interesting to me, and this is a review of the case, but the liquid cooler is kind of allied to it because almost every manufacturer on the planet that sells liquid coolers, they sell 120, 140 um, or uh, 240, 280s. 360s, they're thin on the ground. Uh, so it makes little sense to show off this case with a, a radiator that's half of the top and nothing in the front. What's the point? The um, uh, the Kelvin cooler is made by uh, Alpha Cool. Every other cooler I've ever come across um, that's an all-in-one for a manufacturer is Ace Tech or Cool IT. Um, Alpha Cool, this is a copper radiator, copper uh, heat unit, and then the three um, fans. The other thing is that it has quarter inch fittings so you can if I just turn around can we see mm, doesn't really show too well it'll be in the photos you can if you choose extend this all-in-one cooler so you can break the connections and you can increase the loop um, to either add another radiator should you wish or to add in a GPU um, uh, heatsink block so you can add sorry water block that's the words I'm struggling for so you can extend this loop I mean obviously 360 mil is far larger than you need for Core i7. That's um, Intel Extreme Edition, without a shadow of a doubt. But uh, you can extend the loop either to add a GPU block or GPU blocks, or if you choose, alternatively, you can have a second cooler in the front, second radiator, and that can handle your graphics. You've got many, many options. And the point is you can easily add another of these in the front simultaneously, and you still have some space. Or, alternatively, you go down the air-cooled route. That's three fans at the front, one at the rear, Three in the roof, one in the floor, which will admittedly have an impact on the size of a, a power supply you can install. Probably, I feel best to ignore the bottom, just go for top, front and rear. So whether you're going liquid or air, kind of all comes out the same. So, drive bays. Well, where are they? And the answer is they're on the back. There we go. Now, what Fractal Design has done is they've put three drive caddies reaching around one, two, three. Each of those can mount either a two and a half or a three and a half drive, and then we have two dedicated SSD drive bays over there. So you can put up to five drives on the back, three three and a halves, two uh, SSDs or laptop drives. Plenty of storage, even though at first flush there are no drive bays. There are, there are five fully featured drive bays. And the other interesting thing about that is that the way they've done this um, uh, installation where they put the three uh, larger bays at the front and the two uh, behind the motherboard is that you've basically got up to, I think it's 40, yes, 40 mil of cable management at the front and 20 mil at the rear. You've got far more cable management space than you might at first glance think. And you've also got these cable management Velcro straps, hook and loop if we're being non uh, non-manufacturer's name with fractal design logos on them and you've got these huge great big uh, grommets there are how many are there one two three three very large oval openings with grommets in and there's also and i like this at the top here you won't be able to see it above the motherboard tray there's um another grommet which means you can feed your eps or 12 uh, v connector through and you can drop it in the top of the board. Uh, very often manufacturers will riddle the middle of the case with uh, cable management holes and then completely forget about the top of the motherboard and that is annoying. This hole is in precisely the correct location for this motherboard and fractal design, bless you for that. So cable management is actually a lot better than it looks. Generally speaking, open cases are a nightmare because you've got nowhere to sort of hang your cabling. There are a couple of tie down points on the back of the board, not very many. Those hook and loop straps on the other hand are huge and they do a really good job. A few more uh, tie down points wouldn't be a bad thing, but I cannot complain about it. Um, the manual incident I don't have to hand. It is Fractal Design's usual excellent piece of work. Uh, it makes the likes of Ikea look like total amateurs. Uh, it, it, they make the best manuals on the market bar none. You can look at the pictures and suss things out because they have a line drawing and then they sort of colour code the bit you're looking at and you just, it leaps out at you what you're meant to do. Very good work indeed. They go as far as to spell out um, when you're installing your liquid cooler, uh, depending on the location and which way you put the fans, whether the air is going in or out and how that works in conjunction with other coolers. and 
you can for example if you have a front mounted fan and a rear mounted fan as with this you know whether you have the liquid cooler sucking air in from the top and expelling to the rear or whether it's doing that how you want your airflow to work good manual i like it and actually the same is true of the uh, kelvin liquid cooler um, the mechanism for setting that up is slightly different to the usual ace tech hardware it's not a lot different but it is a bit different um, and in fact, if I'm entirely frank, it's not great because you've got some uh, the, the four uh, bolts, screws that clamp the whole thing down into the back plate. They actually go into slots, so you have to actually align it. It's not great. Uh, not bad, just not great. But the manual helps. So there we have our drive bays, loads of cable management space, and it just works those grommets in those great big openings it basically separates the back from the front which means that this side the main compartment is all about airflow and there is almost nothing to dislike about this case except for one thing which is a significant thing which is the top once you remove the modulent panels and you appreciate these are to do with sort of aesthetics and noise deadening they're not to their filtration but obviously if you uh, fill the top with the three panels you're essentially blocking airflow so you're not going to expect to get dust coming through although as we know dust can get everywhere but if you open the top to install a radiator there is no filtration and I don't like that uh, I would much rather have the equivalent of one of these on there but obviously you know to fit um, so I actually had a magnetic ma uh, magnetic mesh filter on the top doing its job that would please me. The Modivent system, I'm okay with it. I, I, um, I can take it or leave it, actually, if I'm entirely frank. But the lack of air filtration, I'm not happy with that. The mounting for uh, this radiator in the top, uh, it's actually offset. You can see the row of fasteners there, and it means that it's away from the motherboard. Instead of being centrally located on the top of the case, they shifted it off to the side, away from the board. That's a good thing to do. It gives you some space when you have the case laid down for working below the fans above the motherboard it makes life a lot easier when you're doing your tucking away your cables and more to the point making sure that your fans and your radiator aren't fouling um, heat sinks on the VRMs and such like it's a subtle thing it's a good thing I like it uh, the fasteners for the uh, radiator and also to attach the fans to the um, uh, radiator again this is more of a Kelvin thing than a case thing uh, they use a little button head allen bolts and they supply an Allen key for that, that's nice. But obviously you could mount any radiator to it. And logically you'd be probably uh, building your own loop for this. Uh, you can go for this pre-built Kelvin S36, which is fundamentally much the same as building your own, particularly if you then break into it and start extending the loop and adding GPU water blocks. But if you go your own route, I'm sure you'd be going down the colored uh, clear tubing or even hard pipes, you'll be going for uh, coloured liquids and you'll be really showing off the innards of the case uh, that is clearly what it's intended to do in which case if you do that please send us a photo I want to see this case properly built money here's the thing that Kelvin liquid cooler and I, you'll appreciate I've gone for the full fat 360 mil I could have gone for the 240 120 but what's the point I mean, if you're doing that I could have gone for a Corsair or any of the ones we've got, in, uh, got on the shelf here uh, the S36, it's listed at £150. You can find it on sale for £127. The funny thing is, this case uh, with the window, as, um, as you see it, is a penny under £70. Or you can get it uh, with a solid panel, pair of solid panels, for £64. And that means that this case with a solid panel, no window, is actually half the price of the obvious liquid cooler to use with it. Which kind of feels wrong if I'm entirely frank but it makes perfect sense because once you fill it with this thing what you've actually ended up with is a really basic piece of hardware that's nicely designed there are after all no clever tricks whatsoever you know there's no power supply cover there's no PWM hub you haven't got any lighting you've got two fans you've got everything you need don't get me wrong but there's nothing clever there is a lot clever about it but there, there are no sort of extras that's what I'm looking for there are no extras once you take out the motherboard and the cooler, actually this case is quite flexy. You have to put the side panels on to actually make it rigid again because it is an open box. And the funny thing is that that is basically, I think, what most people consider a case to be. 
you know, once you look, it's a box, isn't it? You put your stuff in it and the stuff's the expensive bit, but the box is just the box. And as we know, there are good boxes and bad boxes. In this instance, it is actually a clever box. Um, but it's good because, for example, the front I.O. Uh, panel, it, it stays attached. So you pull off the front and look, you haven't got to mess around the wiring. That's a good thing. Um, the fans, they're good. Uh, possibly, possibly, if I was going to really start picking fault, and I'm, I'm having to work here, because if you look, for example, those fan mounts, they're slotted, so you can put any fan in any location. Um, you can't actually, I don't think, put a 200 in there. Odd enough, you see, limited to 120 140s, you can't go for the one or two whacking great big fans. But there is a part of me that would kind of like the option of putting fans on the front of the hardware, but you can't. You have to put everything on the inside of the case because this front panel has to clip on. But that's not a big deal. It works and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to go back to what I said when I started this review, which is to my mind, the Fractal Design Define S is, I think, going to be for me, the case of the year. And that's not because it's perfect, it isn't. It's very good, um, and the only actual problem is the lack of air filtration on the top. It's because Fractal Design has taken a good case in the Define R5, and they've actually removed some hardware and left you as an open box. They've basically done what modders were doing, which is take out the bits in the way, completely open up the airflow and say, go on then, do your best or worst, and they've made it cheap, and it's a good bit of work, and it looks good, and it works, and the air flows, the cable management is a dream. You've still got all these drive bays, even though it looks like you have no drive bays, you've got loads of drive bays. I want an air filter, I do. I want an air filter that covers the whole top, so I don't want the thing sucking air, uh, sucking dust in, I don't want that. I am in two minds whether I want a power supply cover, pros and cons on that one. I'm, I'm really not sure. But it's so cheap. Anyway, if you're a modder, if you're interested, if you're building your own cooling system, this is the case for you. No two ways about it. It is a blinding piece of work. I have to confess, I'm in two minds about the Kelvin S36. It's an expensive liquid cooler. It's an interesting liquid cooler. I'm not certain it's perfect. It's a bit rorty. That's really the thing because it runs at um, you haven't got any software to manage it, there's no USB connection. I think a high-end cooler like that should have more control. That's my biggest issue with it. As a piece of hardware, excellent, but it needs some sophistication. This case, on the other hand, it's a blinding piece of work. Fractal design, big thumbs up to you. Define S, I love it to bits. Um, so there we have it. This is Leo Wardock for Kit Guru.